Hi friends, my name is Dr. Munir Jan. I'm an anesthesiologist and critical care specialist. Today in this topic, I will be discussing anatomy of larynx. Very important and crucial to know the anatomy of larynx, especially for those who are dealing with airway management, like anesthesiologists, critical care specialists, and ER physicians. So please stay till the end of this video. Definitely this video is going to be helpful. So let's begin now first we have the position of larynx where is the larynx it is the anterior midline of the neck so it is situated anterior midline of the neck right now it extends from the upper border of this you know epiglottis to the lower border of cricoid cartilage so from the upper border of epiglottis to the lower border of cricoid cartilage this is what is the extension of larynx now in larynx what we have we have uh, cartilages we have ligaments we have muscles now first discussing about the cartilages first important is this single cartilage this is what is known as the epiglottis this is leaf-like structure you can see it's a leaf-like structure okay from the above it's free and the lower is long and it is narrow and it's attached to this what is this cartilage this is the thyroid cartilage so it's attached to thyroid cartilage here by thyroepiglottic ligament so there is thyroepiglottic ligament it's attached with this thyroid cartilage so leaf-like structure upper border is free on the lateral side there are attachments that's not visible in this that's not visible in this model these are airy epiglottic fold okay now about this thyroid cartilage you can see this thyroid cartilage is a very uh, larger one okay it has these two quadrilateral laminae one one laminae and two laminae and these are fused here and this fusion is making somehow somehow prominence thus this prominence is known as uh, uh, thyroid uh, prominence so this is also known as adam's apple so more acutely uh, you know fused in case of males that's the reason you can see a prominence uh, you know the ad prominent adam's apple in males while in females it's more uh, obtuse angle 120 degrees so you, it's not uh, appreciable you cannot see from the outside okay but yes in males you can see adam's apple and here upper border is not fused and this makes it you know what is known as the thyroid notch so this is thyroid notch prominent structure thyroid prominence and in the posterior side if you see it's free it's an incomplete cartilage but yes it has these horns or you can say it has these cornea, superior cornea of th thyroid, and this is inferior cornea. Superior cornea, it's attached to this uh, bone. This is known as the hyoid bone. And inferior cornea, it is attached to the lamina, you know, arch of this cricoid cartilage. Okay. So it's attached to the arch of the cricoid cartilage. Now, talking about the other important cartilage this is the cricoid cartilage now the cricoid cartilage okay you can see this cricoid cartilage this is the only complete cartilage okay so you can see from the posterior side this is complete cartilage okay so anteriorly it's narrow okay there is this arch you can see this arch and the posteriorly it is broad and it moves upward okay this is the laminae of cricoid cartilage okay so cricoid cartilage is the complete cartilage and it marks the you know end of this uh, larynx the lower border marks the end of the larynx now the other thing we have the paired cartilages one is erytonoid this is like a pyramidal shaped just sitting at the you know uh, at the top of the uh, what do you say this uh, cricoid cartilage you can see these two these are erytonoid cartilage pyramidal shape on the apex of this there are there are these two cartilage these are known as corniculate cartilage right and here as i said in it's not visible here in this model we have airy epiglottic fold where there you can see the cuneiform cartilage is also i will show you in the other model so this is paired cartilage we have unpaired cartilage like epiglottis cricoid cartilage and thyroid cartilage and paired we have erytonoid cuneiform corniculate and cuneiform cartilage okay now talking about the epiglottis 
So now in this model, you can see this is epiglottis. Okay. Now first, this is what you say the laryngeal inlet. Now if we talk about the laryngeal inlet, it extends from the you know epiglottis from the epiglottis to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage this is the laryngeal cavity okay so this is this much is the laryngeal cavity okay now laryngeal cavity it's anteriorly bound by you know anteriorly it has epiglottis you can see anteriorly epiglottis and the laterally we have this airy epiglottic fold this airy epiglottic fold you can see these folds and this is the corniculate and cuneiform cartilages on the both side huh? that is present in the area epiglottic fold and here somewhere here there is inter inter arytenoid fold okay so this makes the posterior side anteriorly there is this uh, epiglottis posteriorly inter arytenoid fold and from the lateral side area epiglottic fold so these are the boundaries of the laryngeal cavity now Talking about what is important as far as the anesthesia, as far as the anesthesiologist should know about these structures, first is about this cavity. That is in between the epiglottis, in the root of the tongue and epiglottis. This cavity, this cavity is known as, this cavity is known as the vallecula. Okay. So you can see this is vallecula. Okay. This is the valley. So dip between the uh, epiglottis and the root of the tongue. Okay. So this is known as the vallecula, where we keep this curved blade, we keep the curved blade here and we lift, try to lift the epiglottis by pushing the, we push the epiglottis up by pushing to the hyoepiglottic ligament. So I will show you hyoepiglottic ligament, this is hyoid bone, there is hyoepiglottic ligament here, we are pressing it, we are pulling this epiglottis up, okay. There is this glossoepiglottic you uh, know fold also that is attaching it with this uh, you know uh, tongue okay so there is this median glossoepiglottic fold so this is one thing you should know now when you do the laryngoscopy you see this uh, you know cavity you see this this structure okay this structure is visible now you can see this is epiglottis you can make out these are the corniculate and cuneiform and these uh, this is you deep inside you can see the vocal cords and the side sometimes most of the times the foreign bodies are in this periformis fossa okay periform fossa you can see the foreign bodies there okay so now about thyroid cartilage now thyroid cartilage when we are doing this maneuver b u r p backward upward retrograde pressure or backward upward rightward pressure you are trying to push this upward and uh, rightward you know backward upward and rightward you are pressing this thyroid cartilage so you should understand whenever you have to do this maneuver you are pushing this thyroid cartilage backward upward and rightwards and second important is about this cricoid cartilage there is this membrane when you have to do the emergency cricothyroidomy you have to locate this membrane this is cricothyroid membrane okay now this cricothyroid membrane between the thyroid and cricoid cartilage you pierce it either you do the needle or you do by the you know scalpel bougie technique so for that it's very important you have you should know about the where this cricoid cartilage is and one more important thing when we are doing the selex maneuver you are trying to hold this cricoid cartilage and pushing it backward in order to close the esophagus so by knowing this cricoid cartilage where this cricoid cartilage is okay now uh, other thing is about what you say the uh, nerve supply now this is what is the what is known as the thyro thyrohyoid membrane now from the lateral side you can see there is this yellowish uh, this now this is known as internal laryngeal now it's from branch of superior laryngeal now it's piercing this th uh, you know thyrohyoid membrane and it supplies all the sensation above the vocal cord is supplied by this you know now okay so sensory above it is by this internal laryngeal now okay and the below there is this 
Below there is this uh, nerve. This is known as a recurrent laryngeal nerve. That's the branch of vagus nerve. It just runs close to the trachea and it supplies all uh, the you know below the vocal cord sensory and all the muscles of you know vocal uh, larynx are supplied by this recurrent laryngeal nerve except cricothyroid that is supplied by this external branch of spiral laryngeal nerve okay now if we talk if we go internally if you have to see internally what is what is important how you, it looks like externally okay from the internal if you rotate now there are these now there are these folds one is the above fold and there is one more fold the above is the vestibular fold you can see this vestibular fold above one and there is this gap in between this is laryngeal inlet and there is this lower fold this is the vocal fold and the true vocal cords above it is the what is, what is known as the uh, you know false vocal cord and this is the true vocal cord okay so this is true vocal cord Above this vestibule, it is supraglottic area, okay, and below this vocal fold, it is subglottic area, and in between this, uh, the space in between this uh, vocal, uh, you know, uh, this uh, vocal fold or vocal cord, it is known as rima glottidis or glottis, and the space between this vestibule, uh, you know, this false vocal cord is rima vestibuli. Okay, and this is laryngeal inlet. Okay, so this is now talking about this uh, arytenoid, very important as far as the movement of vocal cords. There are these muscles, posterior cricoarytenoid. These are very important as far as the movement of these vocal cords are concerned. And uh, this arytenoid plays, arytenoid plays a great important role. Okay, so injury to this serotonin can lead to the problem with the vocal cords so that's it so very important uh, you know description so you should know about you should know clearly about the anatomy and uh, a gross anatomy is important and uh, yes you should know the structures you know uh, where you can do the manipulations and uh, how the structures look like and so that it will be easy to understand and do the you know you will be best in airway management Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.